So, hi, I'm Elisa McCall, and I'm a director of conservation outreach and a staff scientist at Polar Bears International. Would you say that you have the best job ever? <laughs> yeah, I think I do have the best job ever. And actually, I was just talking to my colleague BJ this morning about how we have the best jobs, and we feel very grateful. What is Polar Bear Week, and why is it important? Yeah, so Polar Bear Week is our annual event. I believe this is the ninth year we're doing Polar Bear Week. It coincides with the annual polar bear migration outside of Churchill, Manitoba. So the polar bears are gathering along the shores of Hudson Bay because the sea ice will be freezing up again soon, hopefully in the next month or so, and the bears will be gone out on the sea ice to hunt seals. But right now they're stuck on land until that ice comes back, but they know it's getting colder. So they're starting to move toward the coast and they're hanging out with us. So it's an amazing opportunity to live stream the polar bears to talk about what's going on with them these are the best studied polar bears in the world it really gives us a chance to celebrate them and this year is extra special because polar bear week is coinciding with cop 26 in scotland and so it's at the same time that all these world political leaders are getting together to talk about taking real action on climate change and it's a perfect opportunity for us to combine the two events what are the conditions like in Churchill currently? This year, it is so far unseasonably warm. Yeah, we've actually had rain for a couple of days. Uh, when we're outside, we're just in like shirts and vests. Um, you can see outside there's no snow. There's a little bit here and there sticking around, but really it's a uh, open tundra at the moment. So we are really crossing our fingers that we see snow and ice soon. The polar bears in this area are now having to spend about three to four weeks longer on land than they did several decades ago. And that's really adding up. And as a result, we have seen about a 30% decline in this population over the last several decades. The bears are smaller and having fewer cubs. So we do know that that is linked to sea ice. And so when sea ice is delayed, these bears are the ones that suffer the consequences the most. So I do know that the team is working with the town of Churchill to create um, the first polar bear safe community. So I was hoping you could talk a little bit more about that and what it means for the polar bears. So Churchill is pretty famous around the world. Uh, some call it the polar bear capital of the world. And they have this incredible system uh, for managing polar bears. So they have a polar bear alert team run by the province and they already have these really great measures in place that help protect both people and polar bears. But we are trying to up the game. And so there's a group of Churchillians that have got together. Polar Bears International is in the support role. So we're just seeing what the town wants. Churchill can be like this kind of gold standard polar bear safe community that will then get expanded potentially throughout the Arctic. The use of tech now to aid conservation is super exciting. So yeah, our detect and protect program, we are testing four different types of radar systems. And the idea is that this radar can be put up in a community and can scan the environment constantly. So it kind of takes away that human element. You know, people are instead right now having to drive around and look for polar bears all the time. If we could get a radar that could detect polar bears before they come into town and give a warning. So someone could go then deter that polar bear. And then we could warn the residents, you know, stay inside of polar bears coming in. This could be done through, you know, a siren or text messages or however we want it done. The ultimate goal is to have an early warning detection system for polar bears. So the testing of the radar is Going really great. They're right now training artificial intelligence to learn what a polar bear looks like. So, you know, we need to teach it, okay, that's a caribou, that's an ATV, this is a polar bear. And it's going really well. So it's a really exciting program. Where can people go to support the, the work that your team is doing? Yeah, so you can check us out on our website at www.polarbearsinternational.org and see what we're up to. There's ways to directly support our research, particularly our current Detect and Protect project that we're fundraising for. And of course, we are also on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. So we're kind of everywhere right now. And this is such a great time of year because we've got new content and we're out there looking for bears and live streaming them. And we are happy to talk to people anytime. So we're always answering answering questions. And I should point out there is, it's really hard to see, but there's a little bear right here. He's in the distance. He's having a nap. He looks like a dot to you. He looks like nothing, but that is a polar bear, I promise. Listen, I can <laughs> see, I can see tiny legs. So yeah, he's chilling. He's having a nap. What is the most rewarding part of working with polar bears? Oh, that is a really good question. <laughs> um, I think maybe 
for my particular job, one of the most rewarding things is talking to kids about polar bears. They're just such a cool animal, no matter what way you look at them, they're just fascinating. And so the fact that I get to learn about them and add new knowledge about polar bears to what we know, and then talk to kids and the next generation about that is so, so amazing. And then I think big picture for polar bear conservation, one of the coolest things about what we do and about polar bears is that everything that we do for polar bears, we do for people. So our future is hand in hand. When we're making changes for the good of polar bears, if we can reduce our carbon emissions, switch to more renewable energies, be more efficient with our energies and just shout from the rooftops at our leaders that we need swift change now. Yeah, that's for polar bears, but ultimately that's for people too all around the world.